Welcome back to Danganronpa. So last we left off, um, we just got this picture from Monokuma that was, uh, everybody in the class but us, which is interesting. Also, also, there were a few odd things, like, um, the military girl was in the picture, the model's face was blocked out, which was very odd, and her outfit was odd. I never realized how odd her outfit is before. Her outfit was odd. And I think that's, those were the three big notes I took away from that picture. So now we are continuing with our investigation. So let's see where we are supposed to go next. Yes. Where are we going? I don't know. Um... Maybe we should meet everybody in the cafeteria? Probably, right? I imagine that after that announcement, everyone would go there. Or the main hall. Nope, not the main hall. Okay. Yes. Let's go to... Cafeteria. Hina. So this is where you've been hiding. Listen, I was hoping to talk to you. Oh. Look, Makoto! S sorry, gotta go! What? She ran off so fast, I didn't have time to ask her to stop. Hina. God, they really... All of them suck in the whole trusting each other thing. I'm like, they trust each other for stupid things, but don't trust each other for stuff that, like, ah. Uh, why, why won't you talk to me? That was mean, Hina. Okay, so I'm imagining I have to find everyone. And they're all gonna be like uncomfortable around me. So let's go see. Uh, let's go to the map again. See if there's any exclamation points. We already did that room, so. Here we go. Do I have to find everyone? Oh, be Kuya. Listen, do you think we could talk? Be Kuya? That's enough. I have nothing to talk to you about. <laughs> Don't talk to me as if we're friends. Odd. Hey, Biakuya, wait! But of course he didn't, he just walked away. All this treatment just because he's not in the picture? He could have been taking the picture. What the? Why was he acting like that? Like he's purposely trying to avoid me. Kyoko's not going to ignore us when we eventually find her. Oh. I decided to visit the bio lab one more time. And the first thing I saw when I got there was her passed out again. Huh? Toko? It's open. Oh, but Toko. <laughs> I guess that was rather cool. T Toko, are you okay? So there's blood in there? No! No! She's not dead, is she? Ugh! It's cold! It's super cold! It's so cold! I think I just might catch a cold! If you keep taking naps in places like this, I'm sure you will. I see! What? I was asleep? Ah, oh, I must have fainted again. Uh -huh. I thought you were standing there, staring at me, getting all excited, weren't you? No, I wasn't. Mm -hmm. Oh, you, you what? Hot and bothered? Age. Straight up horny? Um, okay. So why did you pass out? I don't know. Last thing I remember was me waking up just now. What'd you do to Miss Morose? Oh, that's right. Your memory stops and starts each time you switch. <laughs> Bingo! Bazinga! We share some basic knowledge, but our memories are very much separate. And don't say it's like a bad thing. It's a blessing as far as I'm concerned. Because <laughs> even if she forgets something, I totally remember. Yes. So it's like double the memory. 
Uh, no, it's more like half. Hmm. Memory. But all I want to know right now is where my little dar- Where's my little darling? Tell me now or I'll slit your throat. Uh, I don't know. I'm sure BQ is somewhere around here doing his own investigation. Mm, yes. By himself? I assume so. Oh, I knew it. Fire? I totally knew it. I'm a total pro when it comes to all things master. <laughs> anyway, I gotta hurry. I can't even imagine how lonely he must be without me. <laughs> I just added like parts of sentences. Goodbye, Joe. Togo shot off her eerie laughter, echoing behind her. I totally forgot to ask her about that picture. Well, there's no point in asking Genocide Jack anyway. Besides, I have more important things to do right now. Why did Toko faint? There's gotta be some reason for it. Yeah, the corpse. The fridge, it's open! But I'm sure they were all shut tight last time I was here. That must be why she passed out. I'm assuming it's Kyoko, because she always comes in like moments like this. Yep, right. that's my girl. She faints so easily. K Kyoko! Makoto. It's getting late, isn't it? Are you okay? Indeed. I'm sorry if I made you worry. N no, you don't have to apologize. Listen. But listen about this room. Oh yeah, it's... It would seem... It's a morgue. Yeah. I knew it. I suspected as much. And Togo must have looked inside the fridge, seeing what was in there. And well, there you have it. You knew she fainted? Indeed. I was on my way here when Genocide Jack came running past me. I assumed she must have sneezed, but once I got inside, the real reason became clear. It would seem... I imagine she came here to investigate, and when she opened the, the slot there, that's when she saw the body inside and dropped like a bag of rocks. Oh, it's me talking. Why's everything gotta be so difficult with her? Anyway... Anyway, we, sh we should close it up. Don't want to leave it hanging open like that. Well, shouldn't we investigate what she was investigating? Yeah, good idea. Makoto. Give me a hand with this. Yoko approached the fridge, hands stretched out. But suddenly she stopped. What's wrong? Listen. Maybe we should wait a second before closing it. Huh? How come? Because Maroko's... Makuro's body is in here. Which means it's not the body that was in the explosion. Because if it's her body, and it's intact, then she can't have been in the explosion. Makuro's <gasps> Which means if we find out whose corpse is not here, we'll find out who the real corpse is. Makuro's body is inside the fridge. I see. Just like every other time, the mastermind probably brought it up here while we were in the clash trial. The mastermind did? Because they assumed we wouldn't be doing the clash trial over again, I guess. So... You may be right. Either way, now I can finally get a good look at the body. Oh, no, maybe it is the exploded body. Oh, that's right. Kyoko didn't get a chance to check the body out during the last investigation. Makoto. I need to do my own examination of the corpse as soon as possible. I'm going to find a clue this time, and I'm going to grab the mastermind by the tail. Okay, so what should I do? So then... Why don't you just... wait over there. I'll tell you... I'll let you know as soon as I'm finished. Just wait over there. That's it. Uh. Oh, come on, Mikoto. You've seen multiple dead bodies. I should ask Kyoko, including this one, about the group photo. After all, she's in it too. Yeah, this is the photo again. Weird. Weird that the, the model's face is blurred out. Very weird. Also, I think Leon and Sayako were dating. Don't let me interrupt your investigation, but I wanted to talk to you about something. What is it? It's about the announcement Monokuma made earlier. <sighs> you mean the one about a hint or something? I didn't take him up on the offer. Huh? Why not? Because... The only reason he'd give us a hint at this point would, at this point would be to confuse us, to cloud our judgment. I can solve this mystery on my own without whatever hints he may have to offer. That's a good point. I wish I could go back and do the same thing. But what's done is done, I guess. Standing here looking at her, I don't think she's hiding anything from me. Is she right? Did the mastermind forge that picture as a trap to confuse us? That's gotta be it. There's no other explanation. 
Oh. No, we did this already. Whew. We cut. Okay. Now what? Uh, blue lights. What am I supposed it would to do? Seem... Oh, it would seem the blue lights come on when a slot is occupied. So when someone's in there, the blue light comes on. Looking around the number of lights that are on, including Makuro's body, there's nine in all. Nine. Nine lights? Biolab lights has been updated. I've already looked through the instruction manual. More importantly, You know, I think I've seen tarps like this somewhere before. Ah, it's the same one I found in the garden tool shed. And if I remember, that tarp, it had a stamp on it that said Biolab. And that tarp was used to help camouflage the murder in the garden, which means further point that the body was already dead because they would have taken one of these tarps, wrapped it up, and brought it to... So, so in other words... They pulled a body out of the morgue that was already dead, used the tarps that were there, wrapped it up, brought it to the garden, um, and then disposed of the tarp in the garden shed. At some point, I, someone got it from the bio lab and took it over there. <sighs> okay, Makoto, I'm done. Already? Jeez, that was fast. Indeed. Anyone can do good work if they go slow. In that spirit, I'll make my report brief. So did you find anything? Indeed. I paid careful attention to the wounds and the traces of blood. And it seems highly likely that the stomach wound and blow to the back of the head were inflicted after death. Really? The burnt tissue made things a little difficult, but I'm completely confident in my finding. So that means neither of those were the fatal injuries, right? Then what was the fatal injury? Due to the explosion, the victim's identity is unknown. They were, however, dead before the blast. The victim had been stabbed a single time with a knife, which went completely through the body. They had also been struck in the head with an object about as thick as a metal pipe. The body was covered with other wounds, but these were at least several days old. The only other option is those other wounds. Kyle said they were old. Is that right? Where does it say they're old? Huh? Because... All the Monokuma file says is that they were inflicted at least several days ago. I guess I don't see the difference. Wrong. Well, the difference is immense, considering the impression they gave. Listen. You seem to be equating several days old with simply old. However... But that doesn't quite follow logic. Old wounds, it makes it sound like they've been there forever. Like they're not related to the murder. Are you saying they are? But we all got the Monokuma file, right? After she was killed, right? So the wounds were at least a few days old. There's no way they could have had anything to do with it. So then... But what if Mercuro herself wasn't killed within the last few days? What? At the very least. Certainly you can allow it as one of the many possibilities, can't you? One of many? Right. A detective doesn't have supernatural powers. There's no way to predict the answers from the beginning. Instead, the ideal detective begins by imagining as many possible scenarios as they can. In other words... Envision, they envision these possibilities without prejudice, without bias, using only their logic and common sense. Then, as they investigate, they test what they thought against each of these possibilities. <laughs> of course, me telling you this doesn't mean you'll be any good at detective work. But beyond using that to solve this particular mystery, you should keep it in mind for the future. Yoko's account. Hey. So if there's anything else you'd like to know about the condition of the body, now's the time. Come to think about it, there's one thing. Earlier, when I was looking at Makuro's profile, I listed her height and weight. So... 5 foot 7, 97 pounds. Vitals were 31, 22, 32. Did I get that all right? Do you remember all that? They are indeed in, uh, consistent with the corpse. So then... Indeed. And don't forget about the Fenrir tattoo. There's absolutely no mistake. So it is her. Unless one of the other people had a similar build. Indeed. What are the chances? Our victim in this case, without a doubt, Makuro Ikusaba. So it's definitely Makuro. All my theories are being thrown away! And? 
Is that all you wanted to ask? Y yeah, I think so. So then. Then it looks like we have no further business with Makuro's body. Let's get going. It's kind of chilly in here. Oh, wait. We're not going to put the body back? Don't you think it's kind of sad leaving it out like this? Why? Sad? Did you forget she was our enemy once? A part of the ultimate despair. But, but she got killed. She's still a victim. Hey. Have you ever heard the phrase, you reap what you sow? Well, well yeah, but still. Whew. You're really naive, you know that? It's really quite appalling. But she could have abandoned me. But she decided to help me instead. So for someone like that, what does it mean to be naive? I love them so together. Then. I think we've done all we can do here. Back to our separate investigations, yes? Uh, hold on! I still have one more thing to do. Something I need to talk to Kyoko about. I need to ask her about the pocketbook I found in the locker. If I don't do it now... Hey, Kyoko! I did have one last thing. I know I shouldn't, but I feel like I have to ask. What? Go ahead then, out with it. Have you really not seen your dad even once since you got here? What? What? So... What do you mean? Well, you know all those lockers on the second floor of the dorms. Indeed. I do, yes. But to get into any of the lockers, you need a handbook of whoever the locker belongs to. Oh, that was her saying that. Actually, I managed to get them open using the emergency handbook. I see. The one you found in the headmaster's hidden room. And? So, did you find anything worthwhile in the lockers? I found a pocketbook, and after looking through it... I think it must be your pocketbook. Why is that? What makes you say that? Because... Like I said, only the locker's owner should be able to get into it, right? I can't imagine those lockers belong to any of us. After all, we only got access to that area just recently. What I'm saying is there's no way I could have had access to any of those lockers. And if I did have a pocketbook, why would I bother putting it in a locker? Everything you just said makes perfect sense, but there was something written inside. It was about the headmaster, about your father. What? If that's true... Would that mean that video is real to... What video? Video? Makoto. Makoto, I think everything is finally starting to fit together to reveal a cohesive picture. Although I'm afraid that picture might be worse than anything we could have imagined. What are you talking about? I... I need to go investigate those lockers right now. I need to confirm what you just said with my own two eyes. Oh, let me give you the headmaster's handbook. That way you can... So... That wouldn't be necessary. If I'm right about this, I shouldn't have any problem opening the locker with my own handbook. After all, it would seem that is my locker. Your locker? Makoto. If you watch this, it'll all make sense. Class 78, urgent interviews. A DVD? And it says 78? So... I found it in a hidden room after you left. Anyway... I don't have time to explain exactly what I think it means, so just watch it and see for yourself. I think you'll realize exactly what it means. You'll understand why you found my pocketbook in a place none of us have ever seen before. None of this makes sense right now, but I guess that means there's something important clue on this DVD. I know what it is. Makoto. Oh, and now it's my turn. Do you have a second to listen to me ramble? Ramble. In other words... So as it turns out, the arrangements I'd made didn't stick. Which means I'm less and less sure of everything, even my own feelings. You're talking about your dad, right? I can never find the answers to the questions I wanted to ask for the rest of my life, and all because of the mastermind. However... But there's one thing I am sure of. When it comes to the mastermind, there's no room in my heart for forgiveness. I... I swore to destroy the mastermind. This is just one more reason to follow through on that. Yoko's eyes burned with fire and determination. The determination to beat the mastermind. <clears throat> it's strange to be comforted with his death and suddenly, oh, confronted with his death and suddenly feel this way. What's up? I couldn't care less if my father had found happiness. Why? So why is it, why does it bother me so much to know how he suffered? It's ridiculous. There's just no understanding it, I guess. She let out a small laugh as she said it, but her smile was filled with sorrow. Whew. So that's it for my rambling. There's still much to do before I can consider my task complete. Yeah, you're right. Hey. But keep this in mind. There's only ever one absolute truth. 
whether that truth serves justice or suffering, whether it's great, the greatest truth or the worst. What do you mean? Makoto. Even if the truth you uncover is filled with hopelessness, you still can't give up hope. Absolutely not, because... Because all I can do is keep moving forward. That's pretty much all I'm good at, you know? <laughs> Indeed. Sorry if that was strange. So then... Anyway, I need to get going. I'll see you at the class trial. Leaving behind the final farewell, Kyoko was gone. I better get going myself. Alright. The AV room. And no matter what happens, I won't lose hope. Even if it's the worst truth in the world. It's gonna be that the world is destroyed by aliens. <laughs> and that um, they've been locked in here for like a year. That's my guess. That's the, the final theory I have because everything else, <laughs> every other theory I have is just falling apart. So that's, that's the one last thing I can hold on to. Oh. I can't afford to lose. Um, where am I going? Yeah, my last, um, my last theory is that they're keeping all the citizens hostage and forcing them to watch this, like all the people of the world. And there's just constant war going on outside. And everything's getting destroyed. And there's like a big TVs everywhere and they're all watching the kids lose hope or not lose hope. Um, do I just click one? All right. And you know, I've had the, a theory for a long time, ever since the first picture that they've been brainwashed to not remember the last year. I took the DVD Kyoko gave me and put it in the player. It said that it was being played, that it was playing, but nothing appeared on the screen. I stirred into the black of the monitor. Must have been only a few seconds, but to me it felt like an eternity. And then all of a sudden, an image appeared. Sayaka. S Sayaka? It took me by total surprise I hadn't seen Sayaka in who knows how long, and there she was. Okay then, are you ready to begin? The voice I heard was in the man positioned on one side of the screen. That's gonna be the headmaster. It was the voice of a middle-aged man. I do apologize, but I hope you don't mind if I record our conversation. I'm a little slow, you know. I never really got the hang of taking notes while having a conversation. It sounded like he was trying to make a joke, but Sayaka's tense face didn't move a single millimeter. So this video is meant to serve as a kind of contract substitute. It's not that I don't trust you guys. It's more like... Insurance, so please don't worry too much. What? Now then, let me get straight to the point. There is a chance that you may have to spend the rest of your life here in the school. Wow, I wasn't expecting that. Can you accept that? Uh, um, you want me to accept that? Sayaka was obviously at a total loss. It made total sense. Who would agree to spending the rest of your life in this school? I... I accept. What? Thank you. And I'm sorry about all this. Well, I can promise you that I will do everything in my power to keep you safe. As the headmaster of Hope's Peak Academy, I give you my word. Did they know the that an attack was coming? From the Despair people? Like, did they know this was gonna happen? As if on cue, that's where the video cut out. There was a lot I hadn't understood up till now. But this, only this. I simply couldn't comprehend what I heard. Because I know how much Sayaka wanted to get out of here. I know how much she wanted to escape and pursue her dreams with her friends again. She wanted that so bad, she tried to frame me for murder. So why? Why would she say yes to living here for the rest of her life? As I sat there thinking about it, I noticed the sunlight on the monitor of the video that I thought was finished flashed back on screen. My eyes darted to the screen. And as if I was confused before, what I saw next pushed me right over the edge. Oh, shit, it's Makoto. Huh? What I saw was me. Imp 
possibly undeniably me. So, Makoto, before we begin, I should let you know that I'll be recording our conversation. Yes. That's weird. Me and the headmaster were looking at each other. He and I were having what seemed like a fairly normal conversation. But I, the I in the here and now, had no, absolutely no memory of it. I had no memory of even meeting the headmaster, much less sitting down and talking to him like this. Now, shall we get straight to the point, Makoto? There's a chance you may have to spend the rest of your life here in the school. Can you accept that? Yes. This can't be real. And I said yes. I'm sorry I'm putting you through all this. Well, I mean, we don't have much of a choice, do we? But I promise that as long as you're in this school, I will do everything I can to protect you. So then, how did he end up dead? As the headmaster of Hope's Peak Academy, that's the very least I can do for you. Did they know there was going to be an attack on the world? By these despair people and aliens. Well, not over the aliens. They knew that there was going to be an attack, so they took the most prestigious students and put them in the school as a bunker. The school is a bunker. The headmaster was supposed to be in charge, but the school was infiltrated by Makuro, but Maruko, but, or Makuro, they always mess up her name. But the headmaster had written that he knew that she was a, a evil person. Why would he let her join? Either way, she tricked them. No, she's dead. So maybe there was more than one and he didn't know that another one of the students was one of these despair people. And they infiltrated. And, I mean, and killed the headmaster. And set up the game. Yeah, but where would they get... Maybe the Monokuma puppets were supposed to be good, but why would they add guns? Where would they put the guns in? Unless in the year that they were passed out, they brainwashed them. The the killer had time, the, the mastermind had time to set up the cameras and the guns everywhere. And then... And then outside in the world are like the survivors of this attack being forced to watch the bunker that was supposed to keep the rest of society safe, like the future of society safe. And if that's true, then who, who is the student that infiltrated? I've got two guesses. One, Celeste, and Celeste isn't actually dead because she was evil, let's face it. Or two, Hero, because he is not clairvoyant and he's older than everybody else. So it's probably Hero. From there, the video repeated the same scene again and again with the others. The Akuya. Coco. Hina. Everyone. They all said they agreed to live in this school forever. And then... Yoko. Her interview with him had been recorded just as clearly. Without a doubt, she had met him. She sat down with the headmaster of Hope Peaks, Peaks Academy, her father. And when he asked her his question, she answered the same as everyone else. She accepted a life within the school. Just as Kyoko's interview was wrapping up. The monitor went black. Huh? It wasn't just the monitor. The DVD player apparently turned off. It's the mastermind. Which of course meant the DVD wasn't playing anymore. W what the heck just happened? Say what? Oopsie! Looks like it broke. Out of service. What? It just so happened to break just now? Too bad. Now then. When does it matter? Failure can strike anywhere, anytime. <laughs> That's what failure is, right? Failure, my ass. You cut the power on purpose. But whatever. Even if I watched the whole thing, I'd just be more in the just be more the same. He'd ask the questions, they'd all say yes. The 
couldn't help myself. I let out a huge exasperated sigh. But as I did, I remember something. That's right. I fainted too. And when I woke up, I noticed a strange feeling. Separation within myself, a disconnect. It would seem... Thinking back on it, at that point my memory was gone. At that time I'd forgotten. I couldn't remember why I'd come to the school. I couldn't remember what my ultimate ability was. But... What would make you forget all that? Hey. Strange, isn't it? It's hard to imagine it happened by chance. It seems much too convenient. A convenient outcome. Something that seems so obviously work in favor of the mastermind. So does that mean I've lost my memory too? What about the others? Have we all forgotten? Or... Hmm. Trial gonna start. For anything that has a start, there has to be an end. And if oh the end comes, then that means it's time. There is no night that doesn't have a dawn. Although that dawn is totally pitch black. You know I realized we haven't had a Monokuma theater thingy for a long time. There is no storm that won't eventually end. Of course, then that leads to drought. But as I said, every end is the promise of a new beginning. Which is why I'm sure we'll get to meet again. Because the end is only the oh beginning. Boy. Anyway, let's get started. Oh no, that's the chair behind him. The beginning of the end of the class trial. Everyone gather once again at you know where. <laughs> it's about to begin again. The class trial is going to start. The final class trial. The last time all of our lives will be on the line. The last time hope and despair are on the line. I don't have a choice. I have to do this. Okay, then. This is the end. Ah, okay. <laughs> this is it. very exciting. Oh my gosh. All right. We're going to save the last class trial for the next episode. It might be the like end of the entire game, I guess. Oh man, this is exciting. <laughs> All right. If you guys enjoyed, please like, subscribe, comment, etc. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Exciting. Bye.